scripture lesson for the day, which is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that we both, with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything, and you know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah and Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennia. Oh yes. And that is from um, that is from the Peterson version. So thanks be to God. So as we continue our study in Ephesians this week, we hit what many scholars view as the turning point in the letter that Paul wrote. The first three chapters of Ephesians deal with the things that God has lovingly done for us. We have talked about how God has adopted us all into his family, and we have talked about how he's brought us together as a community in the peace of Jesus Christ. The final three chapters of Ephesians, when we talk about them, we will hear about some of the challenging calls to discipleship that God has for us. But today, the scripture that we are studying from is not just instructions. It's not just telling us about the greatness of God. The portion of this letter that Paul wrote is actually a prayer. It's a prayer for the readers of the letter to be able to understand God's abundant love for us. It is a prayer that we may be able to comprehend what God is capable of doing, that he is capable of doing such wonderful things through us. It is a prayer that we can begin to understand his power and his glory, that it is so immeasurable, and as such, he can do wonderful things. Now, I cannot speak for all of you, but right now in this season of my life, I often feel like I am simply trying to survive the days. But do not misunderstand me. My life is by and large wonderful. I am very, very blessed. But with a large family and children that are involved in different activities, the logistics of who needs to be where and when can feel overwhelming at times. I used to plan things out each week. I'd sit down, Carlin and I, we'd sit down and plan out our schedule for the week and I'd set aside uh, time for what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. But now I simply wake up each morning and ask Carlin, what's the plan for today? You see, trying to keep track of everything a week at a time had simply become too overwhelming for me. And as a parent, I experience the same worries that all parents do. Am I raising my children right? Am I doing all that I can to make sure that I'm setting them up for success? 
I worry at times about the things that peop the people and things that they are coming in contact to in this world. I see the news and the violence that it's been perpetrated against children, and yes, I do worry. I think it's a normal human response to the things that we have seen in the recent years. And I think a lot of us can relate to that feeling of just surviving or just hanging on over the past few years. With the pandemic, economic uncertainty, and the strife that we have seen around the country and the world, just surviving doesn't seem all that bad. When I talk to people, I try to make it a point to ask them how they are doing. And now you know that most people, when you ask that question, they simply respond, oh, I'm doing okay. Or, you know, things are fine. I'm doing fine. But my response to that recently is this. You know, I think the bar for doing okay or doing fine has been lowered. I think doing fine has been elevated to the level of, you know, I'm actually doing pretty good. Now, I usually say this because I, it can prompt others to move into a deeper thought or to express that, hey, you know what, I'm really not doing that well. But I also do this because, quite honestly, I feel as if it's the truth of the moment. But our scripture for today paints a different picture for us. It is a reminder that the creator of all things the one that fashioned the universe loves us. That God's love is so great and so abundant, it is a reminder to us that we are loved and that we are to love one another. So simply in this moment today, I want to remind everyone here and everyone that just might be viewing it online today, that you are loved. You are loved by the people of this church, and you are loved by the creator of this world. In your times of struggles, in your times of need, and when you just can't seem to find your way, I urge you to remember that you are loved. You know, our faith is often boiled down to one bit of scripture, and the reason is it's so succinct and so perfect. And we often hear it quoted, and that's John 3.16, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, that can also read, God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten Son. And so I want you to be reminded of that today. And that is part of what Paul was praying that we would know today. The second portion of that prayer from our scripture today is a reminder to us that God can do all things and he can do great things through us. Now we have made it a point in this church over the last few weeks to focus on prayer. We've introduced new ideas about how we can start to talk about what God is doing in our lives, how he's answering our prayers. And we've opened up the church for a prayer time each week. Well, today I want to talk about how we pray, and one thing that I think we as Christians often forget to pray about. It ties directly into how God can use us to accomplish great things. You see, we've gotten very good at praying for what we need and what we want. But don't get me wrong, we should pray for those things. Right? We should pray for the things that we need. We are told in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, we are to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. And I think we do that really well in our prayers as Christians. But where we fall short sometimes is in praying for ourselves. Now you might be saying to yourself, Pastor, I do pray for myself. I pray for God's help, and I pray for God's grace, and I pray for Jesus to be with me. Sometimes, Pastor, all I have to do is look at you, and I'm reminded to pray for myself. Heaven, help me deal with this guy today, or heaven, help me stay awake during the sermon this Sunday. And I know we are good at doing those things, right? Praying 
those things for ourselves. But where I think we struggle is remembering to pray and ask the Lord to use us to his will. You see, we're told in our scripture for today that God can do wonderful things through us. But sometimes we forget to ask for him to do those things. And as I was thinking about this and praying about this this week, I was reminded of our covenant prayer written by John Wesley. Now, commonly, we pray this as Methodists in the church. We pray this at the first service of the year or the last service of the year, right? That is our traditional time to do the covenant prayer. But as we move to what is just about a little bit past the midpoint of the year, I think that we could use a reminder of that prayer. Now, in case you haven't heard it in a while, remind me, let me remind you how it goes. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine, I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Now this prayer is often something that we say, and we really like the first parts of that prayer, right? Let me be employed. Let me be full. Let me have all the things. We don't really like that second sentence that comes along with them. Let me be laid aside. Let me be brought low. Let me be empty. Let me have nothing. Those things don't sound great to our ears, do they? So why would we ever even ask God for them? Well, the purpose of this prayer and the purpose of it all is to remind us of the covenant that we have made with God. That we are His to use to His purposes. And that we are to trust Him with everything in our lives. We trust that he has a purpose for us and we believe that he can do anything through us. So it is a reminder in all things that we are dependent upon him and we know that he will not forsake us. Now whether you realize it or not, we actually pray something like this very shortly each and every week, right? When we say the Lord's Prayer, part of that Lord's Prayer Ask for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is exactly the same thing that we are saying. Lord, your will be done, whatever it may be. I trust in you. Now, we often struggle with this other idea as well. You see, we can't even begin to fathom all that God can do. We want to try to put him into a small box or a small area in our lives. But he is so much greater than we could ever even imagine. And that is part of what Paul was praying in the scripture today as well. That we may begin to understand in the same way that the saints understand what God can do. Now, I have to say that while I appreciate what Paul is saying, my little pea brain just won't ever be able to wrap itself around what God can truly do. But I can do this. I can trust him. I can trust that the one who made all things can do anything. That I am capable of understanding. I can trust that he will help me through my days. And I can trust that he can use me to do anything because I can trust that he is capable, capable of all things. So brothers and sisters, this week my challenge for you is threefold. First, remember that you are loved. Second, ask God to use you in some way to his purpose. And third, trust in him. Amen. Amen.